PowerPoint presentation. Examination based context session for Mother Tongue and Literacy Development 1 English for the year 2022. I'm your tutor, Mrs. Rita Davids. Please see my tutor details. Dear students, all examination papers are combined as requested by IOL for the courses DPPE, DJPE and CEC. Seeing that the study guides differ so much, there is not a lot of similar work in the two study guides for me to ask year after year, and therefore it might seem as if there is a lot of duplication. Technical aspects of the answering of your examination. Your examination paper consists of the following. Cover page. The cover page is divided into a left and right column. The left column will be filled in by the tutor when marking. Please leave this open. You must only fill in the column on the right. The following headings can be found on the right hand column of the cover page and must be filled in by you. Under the heading student details, fill in the following information. CIF or student number, surname, first name and initials, ID number, examination center, and student's signature. Please make sure to read the general instructions given at the bottom of the cover page. Instruction page. Make sure you read and understand the examination instructions. Examination script. Format. The duration of each examination will be two hours and the script consists out of 100 marks each. It is important that you answer all questions and only one of the choice questions. Study material. The following study guides can be found on your respective Kindles. Study guide for pre-primary diploma in education, Mother Tongue Literacy and Development 1, PPD MTLD 11. Study guide for diploma in junior primary education, Mother Tongue Literacy and Development 1, DJPE MT1N. Study Guide for the Certificate for Early Childhood Development, Mother Tongue Literacy and Development 1, CEC mt one n General Information. Please make use of old question papers and feedbacks of previous assignments and examinations. There you will find questions and answers that can be of good use. All questions should be answers. Where a choice question is applicable, make sure you answer only one of the two. Otherwise, only the first answer will be marked. Read the questions with care. Make sure you know what is expected with every verb in each question. As each exam paper has a question on English grammar as well as the language structure, make sure you know this. Important, the paper is set up so that you write on the paper itself. The quantity of lines given will help you to determine the length of your answer. Some students write way too much and unnecessary information, while others write too little information. Look at the marks allocated to each question to determine how many facts to write to obtain the correct marks. The memorandums provide answers from all the study guides. All information will therefore be credited. Where applicable, students' own relevant ideas will also be credited. Understanding how to answer a question. Every exam paper is set in three levels of difficulty. Level 1, Level 2 and Level 3. These levels are usually indicated by the specific verb that leads the question. In the front part of your study guide, you will find a list of verbs and what is expected of you when a specific verb is used. You will have to study this list or you will lose marks when not knowing what to do. The levels in your exam paper are divided as follow. Level 1, 70%. Level 2, 20%. And level 3, 10%. How to use the verbs. Level 1. List, state, name. Only name the content. Define, describe, outline, explain. Summarize, identify. Just give the description 
or explanation that you studied in your study guide. Tabulate, arrange information systematically in a table or in columns and rows. Level two, discuss, analyze, comment, examine, design, create, investigate and demonstrate. With these verbs, you must still use the facts from your study guide, but you cannot only give the facts as it is. Some other actions are needed as well. Discuss is, means to give a clear description of the facts and then argue about the features. Examine is where you identify detailed features of something or give the facts and discuss them according to a di given direction, drawing a conclusion. Use the list in your study guide to find out what you will have to do with every other verb above. Level three, evaluate, means to determine the worth, the value, the quality, success of something according to a certain criteria. Discuss critically is when students have to provide positive and negative points and draw a conclusion. Compare is where you indicate similarities or resemblances and differences of phenomena regarding particular criteria. Draw a conclusion about the similarities and differences, emphasizing the similarities. Very often, a table format is used to compare phenomena. Very important, lots of students only list the facts without indi indicating the similarities or differences. Distinguish, differentiate, or contrast is to describe two phenomena or things according to relevant criteria. Clearly point out the differences between the two sets. Important, lots of students only list the facts without indicating what the differences are. To explain the differences, the words while and but can be used to separate the facts. It is very important that you know what to do with all the verbs, as not knowing will cause you losing valuable marks. Exam scripts of 2022. Please note, only one presentation will be recorded for the examination scripts of April, August and November every year. There will not be a presentation for, every, for each examination. For the April, August and November examinations, concentrate on the following. References are not done in any particular order. The following are what you might get in any of the three exam scripts. Read the questions carefully to see where it is applicable for the DPP students and where for the DJPE students. Use the refer references given to find the answers in your study guide. For example, unit one, number 1.2.2 means unit one heading number 1.2.2. Questions, national policy, language policy. The DPPE, unit one, 4.5. DJPE, 1.5. You must be able to give short answers to questions on the national language policy with regard to mother tongue as used in a Namibia, only up to grade four. Or you will also have to give clear explanations or discussions about the la national language policy with regard to mother tongue up to grade four. Study this for each exam. Cultural diversity and identity, DPPE unit one, 4.3. DJPE 1.3. Study how cultural diversity and identity are reflected in language. Early literacy development, DPPE Unit 2, 4.3. DJPE 2.4. You must be able to describe the alphabetic principle and its importance in early literacy development. Oral language and literacy learning, DPP Unit 2, 4.4, DJP 2.5. Study the relationship between oral language and literacy learning. Make sure you know the facts as indicated in your respective study guides. Short questions regarding this topic will be asked. 
Storytelling and Story Reading, DPP Unit 2, 4.5, DJP 2.6. Study the importance of storytelling and story reading for early literacy development. You must be able to discuss or evaluate the importance. The PPE students will also be asked to explain the procedure for the DLTP. The JP students must be able to list the elements that can assist to develop literacy. Study this for each exam. Informal and formative assessment. DPP Unit 2, 4.6.2, DJP 3.3. Make sure you know why informal and formative assessment and not standardized formal tests are suitable to assist young children. Study this for each exam. Phonetics and Phonology, DPP, Unit 3, 4.1, DJPE, 3.5.1. Study the terms phonetics and phonology. You will have to know the facts about each term so you can be able to compare the two. Thematic Integrated Approach, DJPE Unit 3, 3.4. You will have to use the facts in the guide to evaluate or compare your discussions to a pre-primary class. Study the facts in the study guide. Choice Questions, Second Language. DPPE students, Unit 1, 4.2.3.1. Study the four stages and founding of sequential second language learning as referenced by Hal Gunther Seth. Also study what researchers found. DJPE students, in your study guide, 1.4. Study Stephen Cushion's theory of second language acquisition where he discussed multilingual education, or MLE, and a four-stage program. Also study what research has shown. Famous educators, the PPE students, Unit 1, 4.4.1. Study the five stages of second language acquisition as conducted by Judy Haynes. The JPE students, 4.1.4. Study the five stages of David Crystal's theory on child language acquisition. Theories and approaches. The DPPE students, Unit 2, 4.2. Constructive learning. Study this approach to develop literacy. DJPE students, 2.3. Language experience approach. Study this approach to develop literacy. In every exam paper, there will be a grammar question on the following. Parts of speech, the DPPE are in Unit 3, 4.2, and the DJPE 4.6.1. Students really struggle to answer this, and therefore it will be explained in depth. The following parts of speech can be tested. Verb, noun, pronoun, adverb, adjective, Preposition, conjunction. The question might look like this. Use the given sentence. Provide each different part of speech with A, a specific function, that is the job it does in the sentence, and B, all the examples from the sentence. Very important. Only write the word or words that you are certain of. You cannot write the whole sentence and make me choose which word is the correct one. Clearly show the correct example or examples at each part of speech. Please note that the example sentences for each exam will be different. For example, he ran fast to the blue gate and closed it slowly. Your verb here is an action or doing word or state of being and it is ran and closed. The noun is the thing or person, a naming word, and the word is gate. An adverb describes the verb or modifies the verb, and the words are slowly and fast. A pronoun replaces a noun, and the words are he and it. Preposition links a word to another word. 
and the word is to. Adjective describes the noun, or you can say a describing word, and the word is blue. Construct, conjunction links or joins two sentences, clauses or words together, and the word is and. The given sentence does not have an article, but some sentences may contain an article. Articles specify the noun, or you can say precedes the noun. There are only three articles, which are the, a, or an. Subject-verb agreement. DPPE 4.2 and DJPE 4.6.2. Being able to find the right subject and verb will help you correct errors of subject-verb agreement. There are seven rules to the subject-verb agreement. Make sure you know the basic rule. And you are going to get sentences. Then you will have to identify the words in bold as a subject, a verb, or an object. Here are some examples. We are played outside with a ball. We is the subject. Somebody said we must kick the ball. Said will be the verb. For a moment, everybody should still. Everybody will be the subject. When Peter kicked the ball, the word ball will be the object. Everybody started to kick the ball. The word kick will be the verb. After a while, mother called us to drink some cool drinks. Cool drinks will be the object. Please note that the example sentences for each exam will be different. Parts of the language, DPP Unit 3 4.2 and DJP 4.6.2. Provide each of the following parts of the language with a short explanation as well as an example from the given sentence. Please note that the example sentences for each exam will be different. For example, he ran through the blue gate at 9 o'clock. The main sentence is a sentence with a subject, a verb, also called a predicate, and an object. And the example is he ran through the blue gate. Oops. Oh, I no. A phrase is a group of words that do not have both a subject and a verb. A group of verbs without a finite verb. And the example is at nine o'clock. A subject is the person doing the deed. Reflects who or what we are talking about. And here the example is he. Object is what is being done to answers who or what after the verb, and the example will be the blue gate. Tenses, DPPE 4.2 and DJPE 4.6.2. You must be able to change a given sentence into any of the following tenses. Present tense, past tense, future tense, present continuous tense, past continuous tense, and future continuous tense. And please note that the examples, sentences for each exam will be different. Example, I catch the ball that my sister throws. This sentence is in the present tense. In the past tense, it will be, I caught the ball that my sister threw. In the future tense, I shall catch the ball that my sister will throw. The present continuous tense, I am catching the ball that my sister is throwing. Past continuous tense, I was catching the ball that my sister was throwing. Future continuous tense, I shall be catching the ball that my sister will be throwing. A quick summary of English tenses. Present tense, something that is unchanging, general, scheduled or happening at certain intervals. It uses the verb plus s. Present continuous tense, something that is happening now or in the new future. Future uses is and the verb plus ing. Past tense, something that happened before now. It uses the verbs plus ed. Past continuous tense, something that got interrupted by an event or a time uses was plus the verb and ing. Future tense, something that will happen later than now, 
who just uses will, will plus the verb is going to plus the verb. Future continuous tense, something that will be interrupt, interrupted by an, an event or a time. Uses ver, will be plus the verb and ing is going to be plus the verb and ing. Exam preparations and writing tips. Exam timetable. Make sure you know what rooms your exams will be in and what time they start. Consult the IOL office for these details and not the subject tutor. Emergency. If you happen to fall in during the examination session, immediately notify the invigilator for correct action to be taken. During the examination, write your details as requested. Read the exam paper a couple of times to make sure you understand the instructions and questions. Make sure you answer all questions. If there is a choice question, make sure you answer the correct one. Do not dive into writing without first reading the entire paper. Calculate how much time you will give each question and stick to it. If time permits, check your answers, spelling, punctuation, and use of grammar. Suggestions how to study. You cannot pass the subject if you do not know the context of the study guide. You cannot start studying only one day before the examination. After receiving your study guide, immediately summarize the content. Read through your summary at least once a week. After two months before the examination, start studying. Do not try to study the whole content in one day, but divide it into portions that you can handle. Restudy the content on a regular basis to ensure that you remember it. The cue to answer a very good exam paper is study your IOL study guide very well because all answers will be from this. Study the work that was summarized in this exam-based context session. You can also find this on the portal. Study the corrected questions in your returned assignment as 30% can be in the examination. Read the questions in the paper until you understand what is asked. Lots of students do not understand what is asked in the questions. Answer in your own words means construct the correct facts from your study guide in your own words and not to make up your own facts and stories to write down. While doing this, make sure you do not lose some important facts of the specific question. To avoid this, list and number the facts underneath each other wherever possible. Remember, my marking cannot help you pass your exam. I mark according to a memorandum and my work is being moderated. I cannot give you marks when the correct facts are not written down. Only you can help yourself pass the examination by studying very hard. If you failed the previous exam, make sure that you obtain a feedback on marking from IOL offices to find out what you did wrong. General, obtaining high marks in your examination does not guarantee high marks in the examination. You now have to make sure you know the content of the assignment and other information from the study guide very well to do well in the upcoming examination. Make sure that you have all the information you get from the context sessions and the feedback of the assignments and previous examinations. You will find very important and useful information through these. Please note, tutors do not work in the IOL offices. We are part-time workers who work from our homes and cannot help you with any administrative problems. I tutor different subjects in different courses, and therefore when emailing me, please name your course code, subject code, and semester code. I can only help you with problems concerning your subject content. I am always available for help, but if you do have a question you would like to ask me, it is best to mail it to me at my email address below then I can give you a well-constructed answer. I can also send information via WhatsApp on your phone. I wish you the best of luck for your examination. 
Your tutor, Rita Davids.